And that's what we are here to do. We are here to teach our brothers and our sisters how to get everlasting life by keeping God's law, statutes, and commandments in the faith of Jesus Christ. Even the uh, the young man with the with the, the maroon shirt, even he bears witness to this book right here. That's he right. says that Jesus Christ came from the house of David. Is that right? That's All right, right. I'm gonna read something else about Christ. Let's see if you bear witness with that. Give me Revelation one and fourteen. Bring it out. I really like this one. This one is about Jesus Christ, the uh, the the Messiah according to the scripture. Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Let's see what he looked like. What's your name right there with the green hair? Uh, Mr. Joe. All right, Mr. Joe. We're gonna read the book of Revelation. You believe in the Bible, Mr. Joe? Check this out. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 14. Read verse 11. Verse 11. Uh -huh. Say, I am Alpha and Omega. So Jesus Christ said he's Alpha and Omega, meaning the beginning, he's the end. Read. The first and the last. Read. And what thou seest, Christ says, what thou seest, what you see with your own eyes, John, what do I want you to do? Write it in a book. So Christ told John to write the things that he sees in a book. Am I right? Everybody agree with that? John is going to write the things that he sees in a book. What's your name, my brother with the white? Mark? Jamar. Jesus Christ told the Apostle Paul, the Apostle John, to write the things that he sees in the book. We're going to read the things that he saw about Jesus Christ. Verse 14. Verse 14. Uh -huh. His head. So the head of Jesus Christ, read. And his hair. And the hairs on top of his head, read were white. They were white in color, like wool. And they were woolly in texture. So Jesus Christ of the house of David, brother brother Joe, Mr. Joe, what type of texture hair did he have? Woolly, woolly. Brother Joe said woolly. Now brother Joe, who on the earth got woolly hair? Irish. No. Black. Black, stop playing with me, Joe. Stop playing with me, Joe, because you playing with the Lord. It's already a judgment coming to you. We try to soften the blow for you. I already knew Read it that. again. The Irish were slaves. His head and his hair were white like wool. The Irish ain't got no woolly texture hair. The black people got woolly texture hair. That's right. The Israelites got woolly texture hair. That's right. Brother Jamar got woolly texture hair. Right. My sister right here with the purple rain, you got woolly textured hair. Right. My brother right here, rub that beard for me. Show me that beautiful <laughs> woolly textured hair. That's now I'm gonna ask all my brothers and sisters, who on this earth got woolly textured hair? We do, black people, thank you. So no, no, Mr. Joe, not you, Mr. Joe. Not you, Mr. Joe, you don't have woolly textured hair. But you know what your people did, Mr. Joe? Your people took our images out of the Bible and put your images in the Bible. Let me get, give me Maccabees chapter three, verse 48. That's according to the Bible, Mr. Joe. Mr. Joe, you bear witness that Jesus Christ was from the house of David, but the house of David are all black people. That's right. Matter of fact, before you get that, give me Song of Solomon 1 and 5. Right, because I'm going to show you what David's son looked like. Let's see what King David's son said about his own skin. And then we're going to have a clear understanding exactly what King David looked like and what Christ looked like. Give me Song of Solomon, yes, chapter 1 and verse, five. and verse 5. Read that for Mr. Right Joe. This is the book of Songs of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. Uh -huh. I am black. Whoa, Mr. Joe. You heard what King Solomon, King David's son, about, him, about himself said? He said, I am what? I am black, but comely. King Solomon, the blackest, most beautiful man on the face of the earth on the house of David, said that he's black, Mr. Joe. So that's something that we got to accept, that Jesus Christ does not look like your people. He looks like our people. That's right. He looks like our people, Mr. Joe. Now let's go back to Maccabees chapter 3, verse 48. And then, Johanna, I want you to come back and close it out. Yes, sir. I don't want too much. I just want a little taste, man. I just want a little taste. Give me Maccabees chapter 3, verse 48. I, I want a little taste, man. That thing tastes good. First Maccabees chapter 3, verse 48. You got what I want? Yes, sir. Yeah, a little blood on the sword. Sharpen that blade up a little bit. Come 3, verse 48. This is the book of Maccabees. Chapter 3, verse 48. Uh-huh. And they opened the book of the law. So what the heathen did, the book of the law, which is this Bible, they laid it open. They got the Song of Solomon 1 and 5 that says, I am black. They got the Revelation 1 and 14 that said, 
his hairs were white like wool, and his feet was like brass burned in the furnace. They got the Revelation chapter 4, looked at the Most High, that said that his skin was like the sardine stone. They got the Daniel chapter 7, uh, verse 9, that said that the Most High God got hair like the pure wool. They laid open the book of the law. And then what did they do? We're in the heathen. We're in the heathen. Had sought to paint the likeness. They sought to paint the likeness of what? Of their images. Of their images. And that's how we get this image right here. Right. You see that image right there? Mr. Joe, who's that white man right there? Hey. Hey, I'll take that. He's anything but Jesus Christ. He's anything but Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to give you his name. His name is Caesar Borgia. He was the son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome. And he was not Jesus the Christ. But the people that were in rulership at the time, they couldn't have the greatest man that walked the face of this earth look like the people they were enslaving. They had to make the greatest man to walk this earth look like them. So you fast forward to America and those same people are ruling, those same images are present. That's right. You understand that, my brother? They lied to you about what Christ looked like. They lied to you about what the angels looked like. They lied to you about what the Most High God looks like. And they gave their images in place of our images. Go ahead, Mr. Joe, what you got? Was that in the fifth century when they when they changed the Bible? No, not in the, in the fifth century. That was the Dark Ages. That's when we were ruling in Europe. This was during the time of the Renaissance. Go back to Malachi chapter one, verse four. Give me Malachi chapter one, verse four. All right, I ain't gonna go too far on that, but uh, Joe, your history is in the Bible too. It's just different from our history. Well, I know our history. What's your history, Joe? We were slaves. No. Ask what my ask what my uh, background is. No, no, we're talking about your race of people, not my, like your particular tribe. My my race of people was Irish, and we were enslaved. By, right, but but by I, the group. Irish people are a, a part of a larger collective called what? Caucasian. Joe, oh. and the Caucasian people I was were not, say, as a whole, the slaves. As a whole, they were the slave masters. All right, they were the people that funded the slave trade that brought our whole nation of people over here in chains. All right, and the Bible says that you all have to pay for your sins. That's right. You must pay for your sins. The sons must pay for the sins of the fathers. Right. right. You must pay for the sins of all of the distant cousins, even though you were enslaved. Absolutely. You were put in chains. Absolutely. That's exactly what happened to my people. It's right. So we were put in in chains. If you go to Jamestown and you look, uh -huh. the British enslaved the Irish. They came to Ireland and enslaved them. But all of those people and are Caucasian, Joe. I know. All of those people are Caucasian. So what? And the entire, no, not so what. The entire Caucasian race must pay for the sins of the Caucasian race as a whole. That's what the Bible says. Huh? <laughs> no, no, that's not bullshit. That's the Bible. That's the Bible. Give me Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. This is the book of Malachi, no, no, chapter 1 verse 4. Where you can't this is what Edom says. This is Edom yeah, right here. The guy with his finger up. We are impoverished, but we will return and build the right. desolate place. So well, the Bible says that y'all were impoverished when y'all were in the caucus mountain. But you will go back and build the desolate place. The desolate places that you tried to rebuild. The desolate places that you tried to rebuild was Europe. Europe is a desolate place. There's no resources out there. There's there's no uh, uh, the, the livestock. All these things have to be imported. All right. You tried to rebuild the desolate places during the time of the Renaissance, Joe. This is talking about the Renaissance right now. Read. Whereas Edom said, we are impoverished, uh -huh. but we will return and build the desolate places. Uh -huh. Thus said the Lord of hosts. Read. They shall build. The Bible says you will rebuild during the time of Renaissance. Read. But I will throw down. But God says he's going to throw down. Right. He's going to throw down. Now, when he throws down, he's not talking about during the time of the Renaissance. He's talking about many years after. Once you rebuilt yourself to the time of America, you gained your independence in 1776. You build yourself up where you got uh, your empire spread throughout the globe with your military bases to the four corners of the earth. At that point in time, God is going to throw down. God, the Most High God himself, is going to throw down. He's going to send his son back, right? But before he does that, there's going to be World War III. That's right. And that's what we come out here to prophesy about. World War III is coming, and America will be destroyed in the midst of World War III. Oh, right. Israel's getting destroyed in World War III. America's getting destroyed in World War III. And then Christ is coming back to put everybody that brought us into slavery 
into chains. That's, That's what right. the Bible says. Give me Revelation 13 and 10. Give me Revelation chapter 13, verse 10. Is that what I want? Revelation chapter 13, verse 10. This is what the Bible says. We must accept what the Bible says. We had to accept what the Bible said about us. It said that we broke God's commandments and that we would go into slavery. We've accepted that. We came to America on slave ships. We've accepted that. Now your people must accept what the Bible says as well. Read. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 13, verse 10. Uh -huh. And that, and he that leadeth into captivity. Read it again. And not him. He that leadeth into captivity. The Bible says he that leadeth into captivity. What is captivity? Slavery. Slavery. So the man that leads other men into slavery shall go into captivity. Must go into slavery himself. Read. He that killeth with the sword. Those that kill with the sword. Weapons. Bombs. War. Read. Must be killed with the sword. Must be killed with weapons. Bombs. War. And that is the fate that's coming to this place to this day. That's what's gonna happen to America to this day. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.